many times where we feel stressed or anxious, but there are some ways to cope with those feelings. That's right. And for today's Motivational Monday, we have Jolie Karsten, a licensed clinical social worker with Karsten Counseling. Good morning, Jolie. How are we doing today? Good morning. Doing great for a Monday. Yeah, oh, absolutely. yeah. We're feeling it, too. So <laughs> what can people do if they start feeling stressed? Well, I think that what's been happening lately for people is that we've had um, chronic stress happening. You know, during 2020 and now continuing into this year, we're experiencing things that we might that might be out of our normal, you know, scope of stressors, and they're chronic. They're just not going away. So people are pretty worn down. And when that starts happening, we, you know, we look down in our toolbox of the skills we use to deal with things. We're like, oh my gosh, it's empty. Like there's nothing left. I don't know what to do. And so so I think that's one of the times that it's important to consider therapy as a resource because while um, one out of every four people in America has a diagnosed mental health condition, um, there is uh, still value in going to therapy to deal with stressors so that you can work on your healthy coping strategies. You can work on your emotional regulation, which means like feeling your emotions without being reactive to them, without taking them and, you know, throwing them at somebody else to try to, you know, create the, these stressors is reactivity. Um, working on communication skills, being able to, you know, learn how to communicate better internally with yourself as well as externally with other people and really improving your empathy and compassion, again, both for yourself and for other people. So, Jolie, I feel like it's gotten a little bit better over the past few years, but there is still a sort of stigma associated with therapy. Can you talk a little bit about how therapy actually does help? Absolutely, because um, that is so true. We're, we're used to hearing about ways to, you know, cope with our physical body, and yet anything that comes across as, like, anything with our emotions, our thoughts, which is mental health, then we see that as, like, if it's not going well, maybe it's your week. Maybe you're just not trying hard enough. You just need to get over it. And so there's this stigma about reaching out for help. And, and even sometimes people think, well, I've got friends, so I can talk to my friends, so isn't that good enough? Right. And friends are great for if you're wanting to vent, you're wanting to complain, maybe you're even are getting some feedback from them. Um, however, like think about uh, the COVID cuts of 2020 when people were, you know, asking themselves or their friends or family to cut their hair. And <laughs> sometimes that turned out great. And sometimes <laughs> it left a little to be desired. Right. So we can get a lot of help from our friends. And using those social connections is a really important piece of taking care of your mental health. And yet that's not always going to be the same effect you're going to get from somebody who's had the skills and experience and training to be able to help you. And Jolie, it might be even overwhelming when you first ask for help. Can you explain to us what's the first step when you're actually looking for a therapist? Sure. Well, I think that right now we are in a better space than any before to be able to find therapy and to find a therapist. Um, so one of the easiest things to do, or I would say the mo most people who reach out to me have been referred by someone else. So talking to your friends or family members who either are in therapy or have gone to a therapist and asking them for recommendations either on a certain person or a certain type of therapy, you know, a certain way that they work with them that they really enjoy, that they can look for. Um, there is a, a great resource called Psychology Today where you can go and look uh, through and filter pretty much anything you want to. Somebody who's in your area, who takes your insurance, if you care about a certain gender or a certain approach that they're using, or you want them to be able to you know, treat your trauma or you're just looking for you know, relationship uh, help. So you can put in all those filters and find somebody who's really gonna be the best match for you. And then you, know, you can always just do a Google search and say, you know, therapist near me and see what pops up and then start talking to them. But I think what's really important is you're gonna get the most out of therapy if you are finding a therapist who aligns best with your values and your goals. Um, and it's really important to be honest from the get-go with that therapist, which also means being honest with yourself, right? Not saying you're doing, you're, that you're not experiencing something when you are, or, you know, just uh, hiding things, because this is the place that you can go to for that safe and judgment-free zone to be able to uh, work through things, process things, get the healing that you really need that you can't get otherwise. Um, and what that does mean then is doing that work outside of session, because if you are really putting your all into that, you know, one hour you're spending, you know, maybe weekly, maybe monthly with your therapist, and then outside of there, you're doing everything the same way that you always have. 
well, you're not really going to see anything change. It's that saying of if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. Right. So it really does take some investment from you to follow through on whatever strategies you talk to talk about with your therapist. And Julie, if somebody's interested in maybe starting with you, how can they get in touch with you to uh, learn more? Um, well, people can call me at 217-993-8343, or they can email me at jolie at joliekarsten.com. And that's one more thing I wanted to throw in there, too, is often you can ask a therapist for other therapists, too. Even if you've started with a therapist and it doesn't feel like it's a good fit, you can ask them for other, for other referrals because they're not going to take it personally. They're in this to help you. All right, Julie, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate talking to you this Monday. Thank you. Jack's got your forecast right after this. We'll be right back.